today we're gonna go over some steps to make your wiring job come out a little nicer a little easier uh, and not look like crap when you're all done so first thing I do my wire a car I have a checklist for all of my customers right so if you're planning on just having me wire your car go ahead and you don't even have to watch this video um, but if you plan on tackling these, uh, this, this job yourself, maybe tune in and it might help you. So, uh, if you're wiring your own car, um, get yourself a checklist, put together a checklist of every single thing you want in the car, right? So, this deal, we've got eight injectors, we've got a MSD Pro CDI, crank trigger cam sync, 102, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we check it all off, right? So, the, the, the first step in wiring a car isn't running any wire anywhere. It's making sure that all of this stuff is in place where it belongs, right? So a lot of people, they get their harness, um, you know, from Holly or they get their, uh, maybe they're using a smart wire, or maybe they use a leash electronics board or race wire solutions panel or something. And, uh, and they're like, oh man, I gotta throw it in the car right away and this is gonna be great. And, and you put it in the car and then you wind up working around it um, like an idiot for a while and, uh, and you screw up a lot of stuff. So, first thing I'm gonna do, make sure that all this stuff is actually in the car, right? So, if you've got a dome pressure sensor, make sure the dome pressure sensor is installed where it belongs, on top of a wastegate, right? Make sure that your boost control solenoids are mounted, make sure that your dump valves are mounted and your converter charge pressure, your VPS, all this kind of stuff. It's all mounted and it's in the location that it belongs in. So it's a heck of a lot easier to have all the stuff located and mounted first before you start running wires and then you change your mind about where you're going to put it, okay? So once you have everything mounted where it belongs, you need to kind of sit back and think, which way am I going to route wire, right? So now we're going to go over to the car and we're going to look at, at some, some stuff on the car, okay? So this is the car that I'm working on right now, all right? I'm going to switch from my, uh, my pointer to a laser pointer. Bam. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Okay. So uh, this customer brought me a car, and it had this nice aluminum panel already made. Actually, I like my manual pointer. So the panel's already made. Another panel goes here. Okay. So I knew that I had to mount electronics here and here. This is the space that I was given, right? So, the first thing I did was I mounted electronics to the panels, made sure they fit and they were going to lay up the way that I want them to, okay? So, you have to decide which way you want to route wire, right? So, I like to try to stay, uh, I like to try to keep the floor as clear as possible. So, if you look here, we routed wire this way, but I didn't just go ahead and route this wire. I first did one of the most important parts of the job, which is back there, put a grommet where it's gonna go through, okay? So before any wires were ran, I put that grommet in because I looked at this system, or I looked at the layout of the car and I said, okay, this is where wire is gonna go. See it back there? Hold on, right there, yeah, right there. So there's grommet. So put a grommet in there and we go back to the trunk here and I looked at how the battery was mounted. This battery is junk. It's just a mock-up one. I got a new one over there. Anyway, where the battery was. And then I looked at where the master disconnect was. Right? And then I looked where the battery chassis ground was. Right here. And then I decided the best plan of action, since we know we're going to be putting our electronics over on the passenger side, is to come through the passenger side of this uh, this firewall that separates the, uh, the the cabin from the trunk, right? So I put a grommet here. Now mind you, at this point, there was no wires in this car at all. The next thing I did was I, just, I laid up underneath the car and I figured out what else is gonna go underneath the car and I used my checklist that we just discussed. And I decided we've got one shock travel sensor, we've got drive shaft speed, and we have um, lights that are going to go up underneath the car to light up the rear end housing and i needed to lay up underneath the car and figure out where the best spot was that was that was going to come through that was right here 
Kind of hard to see, but I put another little grommet in there. I can't harp on the mounting of grommets enough because it's, it's actually really important. It, it gives you a plan of attack as to how you're gonna route things. So if we know we've got a grommet that goes to the trunk or goes to the, uh, through the trunk floor here, we know we've got another grommet that goes through here, now we can start taking measurements on how long everything has to be and which way it's gonna route, right? So grommet, grommet, done. That's for the back of the car. We go up underneath the hood and we look at the layout of this car. So we've got coils here, got boost control solenoid here, right? Um, we know we're gonna have to put headlights up here. We know we're gonna have to put a, a scavenge pump for here, right? Uh, we know the no two sensor is gonna be somewhere around here, okay? So uh, we know our starter is over here, right? So we have to decide more grommets, bam. It's grommet. So we're gonna run our headlights, we're gonna run our marker lights, we're gonna run our boost control solenoid, we're gonna run our dome pressure sensor, we're gonna run everything that doesn't involve the engine through here, this grommet, as well as I like to keep our, our, uh, our wiring for the coils separated from the engine harness. So from the MSD Pro 600, we're going to come out of here and we're going to hit these four coils. Okay. So then I did the same thing on the other side of the engine bay because we've got four coils over here, All right? We've got four coils over here and we got a grommet over here. It's a grommet. So, probably thinking, well, where do all the engine wires come from? Well, I haven't gotten to that yet because what I will do, and this is why it's important to take your time with this type of stuff, but what my plan is, is I'm going to pop a hole right here and I'm going to use a, uh, like a mill spec bulkhead connector, right? But before I do that, what we need to be able to do, and Go to the other side. Go to the side of the car. What we need to be able to do before we decide exactly where it's going to go is everybody wants to put it dead center. And in this car, uh, it's probably going to go dead center. But we have to look at routing, right? So before I pop the hole for the bulkhead connector, I know that it's going to have to come off of J1A and, uh, and J1B. And it's going to have to come across this here. And then it's going to go here. So I know on the inside, I got plenty of room. I'm gonna use a 90 degree boot on the back side of the bulkhead connector. It's gonna come and flow over here pretty nice and then it'll drop down and go here. Um, but underneath the hood, maybe a different story. So I saved the engine harness for last. Always save the engine harness for last. Um, by, by laying everything out where it belongs, what I'll do before I even cut this hole is I will wire the rest of the entire car whole car will get wired. Everything will work. All the functions will be checked before I even get to that. And the reason being is that the most important part of a race car is making sure that the thingy in front of this thingy actually runs. And it spins this thingy in here, which then spins this thingy, and it spins the tires back there. Okay? So we need to make sure that the really expensive thingy in front of the wall, the firewall here, runs. So I can save that for last, right? So we, we want to get all of our variables out of the way with all the auxiliary stuff, right? Get rid of all the auxiliary stuff first, then we do the engine last. And if you do that, you won't find yourself with a running car, but your boost control solenoids don't work, or your dome pressure sensor doesn't work, or you have, you have problems with, with other things that aren't directly related to the engine running. So, we got all of our grommets in the car. First thing that we do, this is dumb, my handwriting's terrible, and if you can't read it, I don't care. Uh, this gets transferred over to an Excel sheet. I draw out what we're gonna do for chassis wiring. So when I say chassis wiring, that's over here, on my checklist, okay? Because again, this is less important than making engine run. Right? So it's more important. 
less important. So let's do the least important first, right? This is going to be at the bottom of the pile. So here I draw out what goes to the back of the car for the chassis, tail lights, rear undercar lighting. I take measurements, which I've done this in different videos. I've shown you how, you know, to take measurements. I write down what color I'm going to use. And I write down what gauge I'm going to use. Interior lights. So we're going to do some interior stuff. So this is the center of the car. This is just for chassis. And then the front, I have marker lights, headlights, scavenge pump, and a starter. Okay? So I get this stuff out of the way. I take some measurements. I write down what colors. I write down what gauge wire. And then I can build all this outside of the car. So this is, this is is nice and compact outside of the car. So when the panel that I just showed you goes in, all this stuff is reasonably close to length and I terminated at, you know, the, the device. So now we get to what are we doing? What are we doing next for, for auxiliary stuff, right? So this right here is my in-car draw, uh, you know, drawing, right? So, or, I'm sorry, this is my drawing of what we're doing for auxiliary. So the VPS is going to be in the car. Shock travel sensors, two of them, one front, one rear. Trans PSI in the car, trash shaft speed, rear. So if you notice, I got like a, a three color pen and I just changed the colors up so it's easier to spot, you know, just in your mind, hey, this one goes in car, this goes to the rear, this goes to the front, right? So this was accomplished by walking around with a notebook and my checklist and writing down from what's on my checklist over here to, hey, this goes in the car, this goes to the front of the car, this goes to the rear of the car. Now I can make decisions about where this stuff's going to run and what grommets it's going to go through because we've already got our grommets installed and what they're going to accomplish, right? So I take this sheet, right, and I start working on one connector, right? So, so we're talking about the ECU, we're talking about one connector. So once you have it decided, all of this stuff, before you, before, for the ECU, before you start running wire, what my suggestion is, is to get on your computer and you're going to start building, um, a little bit. so you're going to start building your inputs and your outputs, okay? So... <clears throat> In order to build your inputs and outputs, what we're going to do is we're just going to say we're in inputs. We're going to create them all, right? So we've got the trans brake button, bump button, front rear shock, drive shaft speed, all that stuff that we're going to use that needs to be in this car, we're going to create, okay? So once that's created, we're, we're going to create all of this, and you don't have to configure them all right now. Then we're going to go to outputs. And when we create outputs, okay, we're going to... Um, we're going to create all of our outputs and what we want them to do. Okay. So once we have all of our outputs created, now what we can do is go to pin map and we start populating pins, right? Based off of their locations. This is the way I do it. So we know that the VPS is in the car, right? We know that the Trans pressure is going to be in the car. Converter pressure is going to be in the car. Shifter. So can we accomplish all of what we want in the car on one connector? And can we make it flow nice and, and, and clean throughout the routing of the car? So, so what we do is we just start dragging and dropping pins from, you know, they, they would be up here normally in, on assigned inputs. And you just start dragging and dropping them into connectors that will work for their, their proper sensor type. Then we look at outputs and we do the same thing. So I do this and I build these, these pin maps before I start wiring the car. If you build the pin map while you're wiring the car, what happens is you forget that you were supposed to do this, that, and the other, and then you get to a point where J3 is full, or J4 is full, or man, I really wish that this one was empty and this one was full. When I wire a car, if the car does not need to consume um, you know, the J2 connector, J2B, and J2A, I try to leave those blank for the customer so the, those are the easiest ones to populate as a customer for what, uh, for adding auxiliary stuff, right? So I like to be able to do the hard work 
and then leave them if they add, if they decide that they want to add something down the road they can in the J28 or J2B connector. So with all that said, you want to populate all of your pins. And again, this is gonna these come over here. Um, but now it leaves my J2A connector wide open. So we leave these wide open. Um, and then we populate our terminal or our pin map 100% before we start wiring the car. That way we know that we have everything where it's supposed to go. We have it electrically everywhere it's supposed to go. Then we also know where everything belongs in the car, like mechanically, like where you have to actually run wires to. So it makes the, the job of populating your wiring harness a heck of a lot nicer and cleaner. So once you have this determined, then what I like to do is come over here and we've already been through the chassis, so we already did that. Now we're going to say, okay, this is my J3 harness. So we populated our connector, so I just literally, I write this down. You know, this is going to be VPS. These are all the, the, the wiring for the VPS, right? So V10 and 12, they're power and ground. Yada yada. Those are outputs from the ECU and inputs from the ECU. I like to have them all on one piece of paper for me. Then I write down the color of wire that I'm using. Okay. Now we know, hey, this one's steering wheel. And this is the dash display. Okay. So this piece of paper is for the harness that I built right here that this harness right here is built and it plugs into the EPS right here. And then it also plugs into what well, runs over to the steering column, okay, for, for our trans brake button and for our bump button. And then I've got a stub out for our dash display built into here, and I'm using CAN bus 2. So then we have an extension harness, you know, from Holly that to get over there to where we need to be. So by doing so, I now have a harness that this entire harness plugs in and runs up along one bar nice and neat um, all I have to do yet to add into this is going to be um, I have to make the decision if I want to run my trans and converter pressure in this this harness or if I want to go into J2A uh, so follow this train of thought along all of your connectors on your ECU and uh, you end up having a heck of a lot nicer finished product that's less uh, cluttered, compact, easier to work with, easier to diagnose. If you ever had to deal with anything with this, you know, say your buddy goes in there and cuts something and you want to take this out of the car, you can literally take this out of the car. Plug and play. It's modular, right? So the more modular we can make wiring, the easier. Because if it can be removed and worked on here, you're not in your shop in 100 degree heat sweating, laying upside down, hating your life, and trying to figure out why my bump button doesn't work. Well, it's because you screwed up and, uh, you know, you terminated it in the wrong spot. But if you wrote it all down, right, what color wire it is and where it belongs, it's a heck of a lot easier to look at this and say, hey, button power is red and it should be from B19. Well, there it is, B19, okay? And then, hey, the trans brake button, that wire is black. That should be B24. But look at that, B24, there it is. So now we know we go over to the other end of this cable and we can, you know, diagnose the, the end of our connection. So once this stuff gets terminated, I then put it all into an Excel spreadsheet and, uh, and it gives you a, a, a nicer version of this with color of wire gauge, yada, yada, where it goes, what it does. So hopefully this helps you a little bit make a... Uh, crappy job a little less crappy uh, and if you don't like wiring or you don't want to do it or you're just genuinely bad at it um, know your limits right just because like I made this video and I showed you how to do this doesn't mean that you know you now know what you're doing with wiring a car this is the focus of this is to try to help you along but I can't do it for you well what's wrong I can do it for you you just have to pay me so if you get halfway through this and you say, Jesus, there's way too much going on, or you know, I'm never gonna have an end result like I want, yada yada, feel free to message me and um, get on my schedule. At the moment, I think we're booked up about five or six months, something like that, but 
um, you know, we can work something out. All right, see you.